All right, so a moment ago we installed the social sharing plugin. You can close your config XML file if you want. We've added the plugin for sharing. And remember, you can see all the plugins that you've got installed under the installed column. But I've got that one plugged in. The way this works, we need some sort of trigger, a button, to then do the action of the uh, sending an email. So in Visual Studio, let's open the index.html file. In the HTML file, we're going to go to the screen or to the line where we've got the logout, which is at about line 130. We've got a paragraph that says what this project is about. We've got the logout button. Before the logout button, let's create a button, contact us, contact the developer. So we'll create a new paragraph. A tag, contact us. <clears throat> href pound sign. So the href, it won't go anywhere. I want to make it do something through JavaScript. I want it to behave like a button, so data roll button. I won't do data inline. I want that one to stretch out just to look different. Uh, data icon. Uh, mail. I think that's it. Uh, our icon of mail. And then an ID. ETN, ETN contact. So we're creating a button for the person to press and it will contact us. In the JavaScript, we need to create a, an object that represents that button so that then we can write the event handler for when it gets pressed. So we'll open the JavaScript, index.js, and in the project here, so it's a little bit in a slightly different order than the original one. But here at about line 15, we've got the object of the form, the login, the logout, putting the person's email. Uh, in the footer. At the end of line 18, that's a semicolon. It's an end of line. We've finished creating variables. Actually, let's change that to a comma because we've got one more variable to create, one more object. So make sure you change line 18 to a comma. L, btn, contact, dollar symbol. What does the dollar symbol mean again? jQuery. jQuery. So we're going to say equals jQuery selector, end of statement. We're going to say via jQuery, let's find an HTML object and save it as a jQuery variable or object in JavaScript. So inside of the parentheses, the jQuery selector in quotes, pound, btn contact. Do not forget the pound. When we had document.getElementById, we didn't need the pound sign because we said get element by ID. With the jQuery selector, we have to remember to add the pound sign for IDs, the dot for the class, or none if it's a tag, a body, or h1. But that creates the object for btn contact. Then we can write the event handler to handle what happens when they click that button. Our event handlers, I think we've got them at the end. Yeah, at about line <coughs> 111 or so. Form sign up submit, form login submit. 
button log out. That wasn't a form, but it was a button. On click of that button, log us out. So we're going to need something very similar now for this send us an email. This contact, line 112, L B T N contact. Are you loving this uh, little helper thing here yet? Dot on parentheses semicolon on the event of something run a function what's our something on the event of what's that on the event of clicking the button to run the plugin so click there's a there's a button in HTML that once we click it then we'll run a function, so comma, function, contact. We had a function that logged us out, a function that logged us in, a function that signed us up, a fun function that will let the user contact us. So the order of this is that we've created the variables early on in the JavaScript. We've created the event handlers at the end, and then in between we'll define the function. <gasps> so we can back up just here. This is the end of the logout function. Function contact parentheses curly braces. The documentation of the social sharing icon tells us that we can let the user choose what kind of sharing they want to do. Let me tweet. Let me post to Facebook. Let me go to WhatsApp. Or we can set that social sharing plugin so that it sends an email directly. And that's the one we'll do. So we have window dot plugins dot social sharing dot share via capital V email capital E parentheses semicolon so the actual command the method is share via email and it's got the parentheses like we've seen over and over um, there's a method attached to this object further objects so with social sharing, I want to share via email. We can set it, share via Facebook, share via Twitter. Or if we specify the generic share, the person can choose. I want to share this through Gmail or share it through Twitter or whatever. Here we're going to, send, we're going to set up whatever the person's email is. If they've got a Gmail or an Apple Mail or whatever, it'll pop up their, their mail account and send, them, send an email. This requires a bunch of parameters. Who is it being sent to? What's the subject of the email? A bunch of parameters. <coughs> so the easiest way to do this is I'm going to break those parentheses apart. Um, that's valid to do. Technically, we could do it here. Open parentheses, enter, event, close parentheses. So that opening and close it there is just for us, for our readability. Remember, most of the time, white space is ignored by the compiler. We can add white space and tabs and all of that oftentimes for ourselves to be able to read it, as long as we write the syntax properly. So in between the two parentheses, for the moment, let's, let's do this. Null, comma, comment, null, comma, comment. We're going to set up these sorts of fields, and then I'll explain what each one is. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No comment, no copy and paste. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eighth one does not have a comma.
these are the various fields, the documentation over at the at Eddie for Bruggen's site gives you all of the details exactly how this works. But basically, the first parameter we give the share plugin <coughs> is a uh, message body. This is a string. A string is in quotes. Put that in quotes. This is a comment. So this is a note for yourself. This is going to send an email, and we can fill in a little bit of the message body here. Next is subject, email, email subject. This is also a string. It should be in quotes. Next we have a to field. Who is this being sent to? In an array of strings. So that means we can send an email to more than one person at once. Remind me what an array is. An array is a variable full of variables. A normal variable holds one thing, x equals 1. But an array, x can equal 2 and 7 and 12 and 99. So an array is a variable full of variables. So here we have a collection of possible two email addresses in quotes. We can also send a CC field. We can send an email to one person and also copy it to another. So it's kind of redundant to have the two in the CC, but it's the same sort of thing. File in an array. What am I writing here? Emails in an array. Sorry. Emails in an array. Emails in an array of strings. We have also BCC. So a CC is you put John's email on two, you put Janet's email on CC, they both get it. And John and Janet both see that they got the email. If you put someone's name or email in the BCC field, that's blind carbon copy. So the two person will not see whose email is in the BCC. And this is exactly the same emails in an array of strings. Next is attachments. Attachments in your www folder. If inside of your www folder you have a graphic or a text file or a PDF or something, this plugin can send an email and give that as an attachment. Right now we're setting it up so this is going to send an email to us, the developer. But again, all of the pieces of the puzzle of Cordova is here's this plugin to do this, and here's this plugin to do that. You figure out how to use it for your app. So conceivably we could use this in different ways. We could use this as a way uh, to do a little self-promotion. Like our app? Tell your friends. And then they click the button and it'll send an email to their friend and it'll fill in our app and all of that good stuff, and an icon for the app etc. Next is a success callback function and then is a failure callback function. So if it properly sent the email it can run a function. If there was, a, if it was, if there was some sort of error in sending the email it will run a function. Callback, callbacks callback function is what's the result of attempting an action. So the documentation explains you have to have all of these possible fields, but you don't have to use them. I'm not going to send CC email to anyone or BCC, but I have to have that sort of placeholder of null. 
So that's why we wrote them all first, defined what they do, and then we'll fill in the details. So for this first one, the message body, um, in quotes, we can say something like, regarding your app, you will automatically write regarding your app in the person's message body, which they can remove. If you don't want it to say anything, if you just want them to write something right away, you leave it as null. But I want it to say regarding your app. You can do a little bit of HTML here. Break. Have it write that part, break the line, then they can continue to write on the next line. The subject of this email, in quotes, CBDB feedback. So I'm going to get an email in my inbox with that subject. It can be any subject you want as long as it's in quotes. We're sending this back to ourselves, and we should actually be able to test this completely on a real device. If you're connected to Wi-Fi, it should send a real email. So here, in square brackets, because it's an array, and then in quotes, because it's got to be a string, put an email. Put your real email that you can check right now to fully test it. You know, if I have uh, campus at school.com, Obviously, write a real email that you can check. If you wanted this to be sent to more than one person, comma, quotes, email at email.com. You can put as many emails that it will also get sent to, as long as it's in square brackets, which is an array, separated with commas, in quotes. I only want, it, want to send it to one person. I don't want to CC it to anyone or BCC it, so I'll leave it null. I need those placeholders. When Eddie Verbruggen programmed this, he said, I want there to be these fields, and you have to put null if you don't want to CC it to people, so don't remove those. Attachments. Uh, if you were going to... Uh, let's say we had a graphic in our project, uh, don't write this, but the way we would do this would be we write www slash images slash logo dot png. Right? We write a path to a graphic in our project. I guess if we fully want to test it, we do have... okay, it would be Cordova. If you fully want to test this, I suppose www is required, images folder, because we've got an images folder, and then Cordova dot ping. <coughs> so this will attach the Cordova ping file from our project to this email that's going to be sent. You can put this if you want or leave it as null. Attachments in your WW folder. And then we'll have a function. Open close parentheses, open close curly braces. I notice here that Visual Studio automatically added a space between function and parentheses. Not necessary. I usually don't put one there. But if it put it for you, it's okay if it did. I don't like it. And this is the result of success. Just a very simple console log. Quoting success. So if it did send the email, it will run a function with the success object in the console. It'll say success. I want to do the same thing for a failure. Run a function with a failure result, console log, failure. Again, there's no final comma in the parameters. Commas everywhere else until the final parameter. Function failure. Curly braces. 
console log fail. Yes? So you gave us this way to write a function mm -hmm. right now. How do we find out on our own how we should be writing this? All of this comes from the documentation of, of the developer. And in here somewhere, they give an example. Here's how you write the code to do this or to do that. And then somewhere here, I got the example about, about an email. So what we're writing, it's right here. It's somewhere down on the documentation. This is what we just wrote. So it's, we're just spelling it in a different sort of way. But there it is for you to kind of... Um, see his example. So the way how we would know how to use this, just like, you know, I don't know how to use uh, a camera, a certain camera, I read the manual. So he's got a manual here about how his plugin works and kind of reading what he did and seeing the other examples, this is one way to set that up. So that's, um, that's that. All of this is technically one command, share via email, but it has a lot of parameters. So we've got a function that runs on the click of a button. Make sure you do save all, because we made changes in the JS and HTML files, and then try running it on a device. Uh, it doesn't look very good at all on, a, on the browser. Uh, it won't really do much. It'll just go probably straight to the fail. Because there is no, you know, sharing ability in the browser. There's a sharing ability in the in the device. So I'm going to build it and run it on the device, and then I'm going to go to that about screen. Remember, it's the icon on the top right corner of the home screen. Now that we've added a new plugin, there's more to compile. So this is taking a little longer. More plugins take up more space, more compile time. So that's another reason why we don't want to add every plugin. We don't want we only want to add the plugins of something we want to do. So this is still thinking and compiling, and then once it loads up, I'll give it a try. So if you have a, um, a USB drive that is uh, USB 3, and you're sitting at a computer that has a USB 3 plug, this should run faster, because um, USB 3 is faster. I'm running it off of my device, so that's the bottleneck right there. The newer the computer is, and the more RAM and better processor, the better. Okay, so load it up. Um, one thing that I can do here, okay, so it's giving me a lot of output. 
you can put the little X to clear the output that might have already been there. You do that once in a while just to see the latest console output. So the project loaded, I'm going to, uh, it kept me logged in. I'm going to go to the uh, About screen. I have a brand new button, Contact Us. I'm going to click that Contact Us button. And then what happens is I get a pop-up at the bottom. In my case, I have Gmail. It's popping up here. I want to use Gmail. I want to use some email client. I want to use Gmail. So I, I click that. It pops up to, to be a Gmail message. At the top it says from whatever I have on this device to, I put victor.school, subject, CBDB feedback regarding your app. There it is. And it's attaching the Cordova uh, logo to the email. I can click send. Success. Now I put a fake email, so it's not going to go anywhere, but it was it successfully launched the email client and it sent an email. So that's what this share via email plugin is about. Uh, we'll use it again later to send a tweet and such. It's going to be in the documentation later. Uh, so that plugin, I'll put that in the notes in the folder to get back to it. You should read those that documentation. But um, if it worked, great. If not, we're going to end the lecture in a moment. I'm going to put my code in the folder and then we'll, we'll check people's work. But it was kind of a bumpy day, but I, I wasn't expecting that. It was, you know, something's going on with Visual Studio or something. I'm going to blame Visual Studio. And um, we'll wrap up and then we'll have some lab time.